Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I'm Katie Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. You might have just seen our dog, Jack, walking through. He doesn't usually do that, but I guess today he was feeling it. Um, I hope you're well. We are well. It's hot. It's hot pretty much everywhere, so I hope you're staying cool. Today's topic is keto versus emotions, or, well, I'm just going to leave it at that. Keto versus emotions, although it doesn't have to be keto versus emotions. It can be food versus emotions. To get started, for those of you who don't, and if someone can let me know, you can see and hear me. I always forget that. Let me know. Uh, thank you. It's always a question. The ketogenic protocol, as I learned it and as I have practiced it for now eight and a half years, um, is, is very straightforward. Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day, total carbs, not net. And grandmother clock is chiming in the background a little late. Total carbs, not net. Net carbs just means eating more carbs. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it, but you don't even need a food list. It's fatty sources of protein, some limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables, and limited amounts of full-fat dairy. Don't eat if you're not hungry, by far the hardest part. Stop when you're satiated, the next hardest part. And I've added one, be patient. Harder still, maybe. Maybe that's the hardest part. Now, as always... Whatever works for you is what you should do. There are many paths that will lead to the same destination. I'm telling you what will work for me and what will almost certainly work for just about anybody. 20 grams or fewer, total carbs, not net. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. All right. Simple, right? It is. And as, as we say around Go Keto with Casey, just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. And one of the, for those of you who don't know, I was perfectly round, morbidly ob overweight, obese, morbidly obese for 30 years. I had given up on losing weight. You can see some of my photographs from not my highest weight because those don't exist. Um, and maybe some of you can understand how that works at my blog, link below. It's just CaseyDurango.com. I'd given up on losing weight. I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes, came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman of Duke University, who is now, I'm happy to say, a friend. And that was the protocol. Keep your carbs 20 grams fewer a day. It's not on page four, link below. It's page four because he hands out a five-page thing to his clinic patients stapled together and the food list is on page four. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. So that's what I do. Here's something though. Now I will tell you that I knew that low carb worked for me since 1977. I was a junior in college. I tried it again and I lost a little bit of weight. I got the Atkins Diet Revolution book Lost the 13 pounds I wanted to lose that I'd put on, like the freshman 15, I put on the sophomore 13, threw the book away and went about my life and stayed cute and fit and all that stuff, charming, cute as a button. And then early 20s, got married, quickly followed by giving birth to our first child, quickly followed by giving birth to our second child. And from my mid-20s, was when I put on a lot of weight with the pregnancy and it just never went away. Early 2000s, I said, let me try that low carb again. And I did. I lost some weight until, until I had a problematic, one of several, problematic medical diagnoses. And I let my emotions get the better of me. I, I made food choices based on my emotion, which I think... I will be surprised if there's anyone here who has not made a food choice out of an emotion, a state of emotion, please raise your hand and tell us how you did that. It's almost a given. It's all, we're almost 
encouraged, certainly by the food manufacturers, that if we've had a, a bad day, if we're under stress, you know, turn to food. It's ubiquitous. Images of people upset eating ice cream out of the carton as if that will fix the problem. All of us have done this. And, and for those of you who have not been here before, I'm going to talk a little bit that I'm going to turn my attention to comments and questions for the lovely people who, who, who show up and, and share their thoughts and questions and feelings. So I'll be seeing those about halfway through. I did this. I can, I please do not think that I'm ever someone that says, oh, this is just simple. Just get a grip. There, I've been thinking about this. There are two phrases that we should eliminate from our verbal repertoire when we are speaking to someone who is struggling with something. It doesn't matter what they're struggling with. Never start by saying, all you need to do is fill in the blank. Or why don't you just fill in, don't do that. All well and easy to deal with someone else's problems when you're not experiencing them. Experiencing them. But anyway, emotions. Oh, and these can be happy emotions. Oh, celebrate. Let's eat. Sad emotions. Oh, I'm so disappointed that my team didn't win. That's kind of shallow. But no, oh, let's, you know, go out and get some beer and pretzels and drown our sorrows. Broken hearts. Fear, anxiety. The phrase I use food to cope is, again, omnipresent. But it's literally the opposite of what's true. We use food to not cope. Because if hunger is not the problem, food is not the answer. It's not the solution. Food will not break a, a mend a broken heart or disappointment or anger or anxiety. All you'll have then is broken heart, anger, fear, and anxiety, and feel guilty about eating food that makes you feel bloated and gross. It's, you compound the problem. You don't fix it. So I have, I have four years. I mean, you didn't get as big as I was. I'm 5'1", and I'm actually 115 and a half pounds off of my heaviest weight. You didn't get to be that big and perfectly spherical without... Making excuses, and I'm not going to say explanations, excuses. Having pity parties. Choosing to believe information that somewhere in the back of my mind I knew probably wasn't true. But we, we believe what we want to believe. And we listen to people who deliver a message that we want to hear. And this is not just about laying off the carbs and dealing with your emotions. Although I will tell you, for me, not having the surge and ups and downs of mood, which for me, I'm con I convinced, I know in my heart that my previous waxing and waning levels of clinical depression were a result of insulin spikes and drops and glucose rises and spikes, spikes and drops. Not having to deal with that yeah, I have to look at the issues face on. Well, that's no fun. Okay, you know, if you're not using food to distract yourself from the issue, you know what it means? You have to deal with the issue. There's an old, you know, thing that I heard someone in recovery from alcohol said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean I have to deal with all this stuff that's going on in my life and I have to do it sober? Yeah. It's tough. but food will not fix anything. We are stronger than we believe. We are stronger than we know. We are stronger than we've told ourselves about ourselves. We would not recommend to a friend or a loved one that, well, you just really don't have the wherewithal to deal with this problem right now. So you might as well just get the chocolate covered pretzels. Would, would anyone tell anyone that. But that's kind of the message we send to ourselves sometimes. If hunger is not the problem, food is not the answer. Let me tell you, I'm going to be very transparent here. I am not immune to emotions or bad days 
or anxiety. I'm going to tell you that the last two months have been stressful, upsetting, anxiety laden, and then the last couple of days have been tear filled. Speaking as someone who would have, I would have turned to some kind of food before. I haven't done that because it wouldn't fix anything. It would just make me feel physically unwell. But I, that was a that was a progression. I got there. I had to recognize some things about myself. I had to quit lying to myself about certain things. The sun don't shine on the same dog's ass every day. And I can tell you the last couple of days, even though it's been hot and no clouds in the sky, it does not feel like the sun has been shining on my backside. But we deal with it. I promise you I would have turned to food before. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of habit. It's a sign of that's what the culture tells us. That's what the food manufacturers tell us. That's what our friends tell us. Oh, bless your heart. You've had a rough day. Come on. Let me buy you a chocolate slice of chocolate cake at your favorite place. That just makes a rough day followed by a depressed next day. And it's not just keto doesn't fix that. Okay. What the ketogenic protocol has done for me is for one thing, it has regulated my mood for me. It has made me recognize certain things about my previous food behavior. I'm appalled. I'm appalled at what I did. But I did it. And now I'm better. And if you're not there yet, you can be. If I can do this, you can do this. 100% guaranteed. If I can do this, I was a hot mess. If I can do this, you can do this. But if hunger is not the problem, food is not the solution. Food will not fix a broken heart. Fear of the unknown. It won't fix anger. It won't fix having your feelings hurt. It won't fix having a rotten boss. <laughs> All those things that happen to us. It won't fix the fact that we've had some unexpected things happen in our household. <laughs> Didn't food wouldn't have fixed any of them. Not one. You just have to deal with it. We have to deal. We have to cope. And we don't use food to cope. We use food to not cope. It can be done and it might hurt and it may feel bad, but eating food that you know doesn't serve you well only makes you feel bad and then worse. I speak from experience. So what's the solution? There maybe is not a solution. There's a practice. It's a practice. It's not a simple solution, but the next time you feel something welling up in you, practice the fact that, okay, I, I can feel this coming. But I told myself the way to prepare for this type of thing is in advance before you're experiencing it. So, okay, what did I tell myself? I'm going to, next time I'm feeling like this, when I feel like going to the pantry or the fridge or getting in my car and going to the drive through I'm going to, uh, I'm going to. I'm going to go dig in the garden, or I'm going to take the dog for a walk, or I'm going to do 20 jumping jacks, or I'm going to write in my journal. I'm going to do something other than eat. You have to prepare for that. And then you practice it. And then you realize, oh my God, when you when that emotional time has passed, and sometimes it's just five minutes, sometimes it's longer, you say, oh my gosh, I got through that and I didn't turn to food. It is liberating. And then the next time, same thing. If I can do this, you can do this. I promise. And you don't, there's no magic product that you can buy to get you past emotional eating. You have to work at it. You have to do it. You have to work it. You have to not eat when you're emotional. 
You have to not eat when you're emotional. Around Go Keto with Casey, we have a calendar thing that, you know, employ the blast method when making food decisions. Don't make a food decision when you're blast. Be bored, lonely, angry, stressed, or tired. Because none of those things are hunger. You can do it, but you have to do it. And we have to quit making excuses. And we all have. So I'm going to turn turn a few seconds, shameless commerce division. I always like to give a tip of the hat to the car top guys. Uh, you do not have to buy one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol, but I will sell you a mug all day long that reads, lay off the carbs, lay off the excuses, and has a little thing of my mug on the back. Water bottle, go keto with Casey Steel water bottle. You can see these linked at my Teespring store. My best-selling t-shirt from the Teespring. I'm stronger than a cookie. You know, we tell ourselves, oh, I just can't get, I can't get through this stressful time without eating. Of course you can. It's illogical. Say it out loud. I just said, I can't get through this stressful time without eating. You're stronger than a cookie or chocolate covered pretzels or ice cream or French bread, whatever your thing is. Anyway, you can see a link to that. And for those uh, people have asked, this is a women's size small for reference. Okay. And at my blog, while they last, spiral, um, Spiral Go Keto with Casey 12 month journal. And here's a, and several, there are quotes in it. Here's one from the uh, His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. If a problem has a solution, there is no need to worry. If a problem has no solution, worry is of no use. We let worry get the better of us as well. So, anyway, you can see those at my blog, as long as it's pop sockets and stuff. Oh, and you can register for the Go Keto with Casey Roadshow event in October with attendees who are the actual stars. And then we're going to let some other people hang out with us. Dr. Eric Westman, Jackie Eberstein, and her wonderful husband, Conrad, and Amy Berger. Uh, you can see that. And more information is coming. But it will be half Saturday afternoon, the 8th of October, and Sunday, the 9th of October. I can only get the facility on Sunday because it's a very popular facility. All right. So there we go. I am now going to turn to comments. So please share if you are comfortable doing so. And I do want to get, oh, I want to give a tap tip that have the hat to my patrons, some of whom are here. I have a private Patreon uh, support group, a uh, patron only support group on Patreon. Depending on your pledge level, you get 20 video snippets from me a month. First thing in the morning, bed hair and no makeup. And I'm incoherent half the time. Uh, 20 of those a month. Up from there, a handful of patron-only live streams on Crowdcast. Up from there, a handful of patron-only video group sessions on Zoom. And up from there, monthly one-on-one with me. There, done. Okay. Okay, Barbara P. writes, you are a great role model for me. Thank you, Casey. Well, thank you very much. Kathy Hans says, hello. Kathy Hans says, I so enjoy your talks and information. Well, thank you. To those too much has been given, much is expected, and I and I get a lot out of doing these as well. A new beginning. Toby McBallarina, me too. I don't know what that comment was. Okay, Toby says, some days, especially in the evening, I find myself emotional eating pork rinds, cheese, or nuts. Also not good. Right. You can overeat keto food. Oh, by the way, nuts are not on page four. But if you can eat nuts and get away with it, and that's fine. That's, the reason nuts are not on page four is because they're calorically dense. They're carb dense and they're very easy to mindlessly overeat. You know, a serving of almonds is about that big. And it's like 120 calories and four grams of carbs or something like that. But anyway, you can overeat keto food. You can put on weight on keto. You can be burning fat for fuel and put on weight by eating more fuel than you require. Okay. Um. Judy Tucker writes peanut butter. Okay, I'm going to guess that that, that Judy, who has very been very successful, Judy, if you want to share your story from Hopkinton, Iowa, um, she's a patron. Peanut. There are certain foods, of course. Peanuts are not on page four. Peanuts are not nuts; they're legumes like pinto beans. But peanut butter is rough. We just ooh. grateful for your efforts. Casey writes Mary E. Foxgrim, naked mole rat. Good morning from PA. It's an interesting handle. 
Andrea L., your weekly lives help keep me on track. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for all these. I'm, I'm not trying to find just complimentary comments. I'm just looking at what pork cracklings are not my savior. <laughs> That's another good one. Yvonne Gilman. Hi, Casey. Uh, from UK, Cadbury chocolate buttons banned from the house. We all have our things. You know what's rough for me? Peanut butter. We don't keep it in the house. Um, mashed cauliflower. Hmm. P. Glasgow, this is my second time watching this live, and I'm glad to be here again. Glad you are here. Renee W., how do you know when you are truly hungry? Trying to figure it out if it's out of habit. This is, a for me, the sensation of hunger when I'm a burning fat for fuel, which is what this means. When you lower your carbohydrate intake sufficiently, your liver quits pumping out glucose like a fire hose, and so our body quits burning uh, glucose as it's first on deck fuel. And when that supply is kind of ratcheted down, our bodies happily turn to burning ketones or fat for fuel. And it's very efficient. It's very elegant. So you're either a sugar burner or you're a fat burner. There's really kind of no in between. Um, so when you're a fat burner, hunger is different, at least it is for me, than when I was a sugar burner. Because when you're a sugar burner, your brain tells you to get more glucose. And it's a whole physiological thing why that happens. Suffice to say that your brain is saying, get me more glucose, which is why you go roaming the halls looking for a cookie when you've just eaten two hours ago. When you're a fat burner, the brain is happily chugging along and there's plenty of ketones everywhere for it to burn. You brain doesn't have to call for more. So here's the thing. I, I, if you're not sure whether you're hungry or not, I think you just answered your question. I am peckish right now. If I was not doing this live, I'd be eating right now because I'm I'm peckish plus. Round go keto with Casey, we say push the peckishness. Peckish just means, oh, I could eat. I could eat. Most mornings I wake up peckish, but not, not to the point where I feel like I need to eat. Most days I have my first plate of fuel late morning, mid-morning, late morning, sometimes 12, sometimes I, not until the afternoon. It just depends on... What's going on with me? But if you're not sure whether you're hungry, you're probably not hungry. Right? I mean, it's, I'm, not, I'm not being dismissive. We have to learn this. And we do have to figure out that are you here out of hunger or out of habit? My head, I had magnets that said that. Sorry. Uh, they all sold out. Are you here out of hunger or out of habit? And it showed a French door refrigerator with the doors open. Um. Cassandra Bull writes, peanut butter is my downfall too. Yeah, I just don't have it in the house. Lonnie Bell Boutique, or have it in the house, but say you're not going to eat it because you're stronger than peanut butter. What about, dink, uh, Lonnie Bell Boutique writes, what about drinking diet soda? Is this a thumbs up or down? I Oh, my, hash, my hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. Glass full of ice. Diet tonic water, which is essentially diet soda. Splash of diet cranberry juice and a squeeze of lime. If you are someone for whom the sensation of sweet, even if it comes from a non-sugar sweetener, triggers you wanting more sweets, it kind of, oh, then be careful with that. But there is no, there is no data that non-sugar sweeteners spike anything, insulin or anything else. So if it works for you, do. But if you would just soon not have the sensation of sweet and not have to think about it, figure that out. And the only way to do is to ask yourself questions. Naked mole rat, my 10-year-old son's humor, meaning your, your handle, right? Judy Tucker writes, keto, almost five years, off 10 different medications, and lost 135 pounds. And I want to tell you, Judy's a farmer, a real-life true farmer, toting bales of hay and jumping on and off the giant tractor and birthing calves. Can you imagine doing that 135 pounds ago? <laughs> Vicki Dismore, you are what you don't eat. M Naked mole rat. I love that when fat burning, I don't feel that carb hunger. It's even keeled hunger that doesn't beg me to answer that. That's exactly right. It's like, oh, it's not an emergency, right? It's not, a, oh, I got to get something. Some people, some people I, I'm related to gave birth to or sleep with when they're burning sugar get hangry. Not pleasant to be around. 
Toby McBallarina traveled from Nevada here to Wilmington uh, in 30 hours during my travel. It felt so good to not worry about food while traveling. This is another thing. People think, oh, I'm going on a three-hour trip on the highway. What am I going to do? I'm going to need to bring a cooler of something. It's three hours. It'll be all right. It's okay. But we have to learn that about ourselves. We have to learn it's okay. I wish I didn't have to keep putting my glasses on and off. For some reason, my vision fluctuates. Some days it almost feels, I, I don't know, it might be, who knows what it is. But today I need my glasses. A new beginning. For two months, I've been at a standstill. Sleeping is rare. Can you give a talk on sleeping? Well, sleep is sleep is a big deal. And when you say you've been at a standstill for two months, keep in mind, things can be going on that are not reflected on the scale. The scale is not a good arbiter of this diet. Have you lost any inches? Are your clothes fitting more loosely? So if that's true, you're not at a standstill. It's just the scale sometimes does not go in a straight line. Sleep, yeah, we have to practice good sleep hygiene, as they call it. And there are a lot of factors that go into it. For me, my sleep is more restorative, much more comfortable. When I was so heavy, I couldn't find a comfortable position to sleep. All that mass of body would push down. I had sleep. I didn't have sleep apnea. I was never diagnosed, but I'm I think if I'd gone to a sleep lab, I would have been diagnosed with it. Acid reflux. I would wake myself up snoring. And I just couldn't get in a good position. Now I can sleep on my back, which I usually do. I might still snore. I hope not. But I don't think so. I don't wake myself up snoring. But I also make a practice of kind of, I don't look at my phone or my computer you know, last thing, I don't have my, I'm not look in bed looking at my phone or a tablet or anything like that. It's quiet. I don't have a television in the bedroom. So there are lots of factors that go into that. My friend Jackie Epperstein recommends melatonin. Uh, Naked Mole Rat, do you use keto-friendly sweeteners in your drinks? Yeah, I use uh, only for our coffee. Uh, Splenda. Stacy, no, I'm skew. I, I beg your pardon. Not that it was she, uh, Stacy Randall. It's Sherry Randall. See, my glasses are not even doing a good job. Been ketovore for seven months. Still ketones is 0.3. You have any idea and scale not moving? Okay. Don't worry about the ketone level. 0.3 is fine. It's like a. It's like pregnancy. Either you is or you ain't. So you're fine at 0.3. Your body chemistry just might be one that burns, you know, measures beta hydroxybutyrate at a lower rate. My body chemistry tends to be high. Um, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm not getting a better place in heaven because of it. And I've been weight stable for almost six years. So being in ketosis doesn't equal weight loss. Now, if the scale is not moving and your clothes aren't fitting looser, if your weight's stable, you now know what to eat to maintain your weight. Less food. And it sounds, you know, we don't count calories, but ultimately calories count. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And there's, we have to learn this and slow up when you're eating. The satiety signal takes a few minutes to get to your brain. And if it takes five minutes longer to reach your brain, than it took you to eat the entire plate of food. You may find that you're overeating and be patient. Naked Mole Rat uh, writes, I feel like I'm hooked on xylitol and half cup of heavy cream for my large cup of morning coffee, but I'm still losing weight and my inflammatory pains have all but si uh, subsided. Well, that's great. That would be way too much for me. And xylitol, I will tell you, is the only non-sugar sweetener. I actually was part of a very small little trial, uh, clinical trial about this. It actually impacted my, beta my ketone readings, both by beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate, and acetone, which are blood, urine, and breath. It was a well-constructed thing, but no, I, we use Splenda. And we didn't, my husband and I, neither of us like the other non-sugar sweeteners. We feel like stevia and all the variations on that, all that have a 
bitter aftertaste. We just blend in our coffee. Half a cup of coffee is a lot of coffee, friend. I mean, a lot of cream. Half a cup of cream and coffee. But if it's working for you, muzzle tough. Judy Tucker writes, when I first started keto diet, soda and bourbon never bothered me. Now I can't drink that one sip and I'm drunk. Alcohol becomes something. Okay, I'm going to start to wrap up here. I try to keep my um, comments to a minimum and I really appreciate it. Look at my calendar. There's some upcoming in-person events. The Drum Support Group meeting with Dr. Eric Westman and me in Durham, North Carolina. Go Keto with Casey meetup monthly at Wine Styles in Greensboro. And um, then, of course, the October event, which I'm really excited about. More information to come. I just have to knuckle down and, and make the agenda. All right. So thank you very much. I appreciate you allowing me to be part of your Saturday. And remember, if hunger is not the problem, food won't fix it. That's just the way it is. Thank you, friends. Be sweet. Just don't eat sweets.